this place is killing me. Now, I've said that. You may well have said that. This guy may well have said this 2,000 years ago. This is Hippocrates, probably the best known doctor ever. And one of the writings he's associated with is Airs, Waters, Places, which really was a handbook for the ancient Greeks as to what was healthy and what was unhealthy in terms of cities. And cities were really important to the Greeks as they spread their trading empire around the Mediterranean, and they're even more important to us now. According to the United Nations, we're going to have more than two-thirds of the world's population urbanized by 2050. And in Europe, it'll be even more. Over 80% will be urbanized. Now, some of the things that the, the Greeks talked about in Airs, Waters, Places about cities still hold. Winter, for example, we've just had a very cold winter. And if you count the number of deaths that take place in a winter, and then you compare that number of deaths to the four months on either side of those four winter months, you get something called the excess winter death rate, if you turn it into a rate. And you would think, well, that's because it's cold. Well, it's not quite as simple as that. Scandinavia, where the much more severe winters have an excess winter death rate of about half of the rate we have in this country. It's to do with our built environment. It's to do with the houses we live in, how well or badly insulated they are, how much money we have to heat them. Summers, in the year 2003, 70,000 people died prematurely in the heat wave that swept across Europe in August of that year. 70,000. And predominantly elderly people, and predominantly in cities. Why? Because cities aren't very healthy places to be if it's hot. On average, across the whole year, cities can be up to three degrees warmer than the surrounding countryside. And during a heat spell, a hot spell, an e in an evening in a city can be 12 degrees hotter than the surrounding countryside because of all the concrete and all the tarmac and the lack of trees and green spaces. Air quality, the Greeks cared about as well. Now, we may think we've got air quality solved. We don't burn coal on our fires anymore. And we don't have smogs anymore. But we do have microparticulate pollution all around us. And about 13,000 people die prematurely in the UK because of air pollution from combustion. A majority of that combustion is from motor engines. And guess where that pollution is worse? It's in our cities. So we can do some things about this, can't we? One of the things I do, I cycle a lot. But we don't actually make it very easy. Now, this is about 50 meters from my front door, and I cycle along this road regularly. And those who cycle will recognize uh, that this cycle lane has two characteristics that they will have come across themselves. One is it's very short. This is about 20% of the entire length of this cycle lane. And secondly, in common with very many cycle lanes, it comes to an end at a junction or a roundabout just when it might be useful to you. This street is about 70 meters from my front door, and along this street runs the side of the primary school that my kids went to. Um, you may say, no pavements? Yeah, there are pavements there, just they're parked on. You can't actually walk on the pavements, and if you want to walk down the street, you have to do like this guy's doing, and walk down the middle of the pavement. No wonder parents are reluctant to let their children cycle or walk to school. No wonder in this country, 38% of primary school children uh, are taken to school by car. No wonder we've got childhood obesity. Now, I was never taken to school by car or home from school by car. And the trip home from school took a hell of a lot longer than the uh, trip to school because I was playing football, playing in the park, uh, tearing holes in my trousers, etc. Those days have gone. If you look at the data, and there's a really neat study of Germany and the UK, of England and Germany. If you look at the data, 20 years ago, almost 60%, more than 60% of children in England were escorted home, accompanied home from school, only 12% in Germany. 20 years on, it's nearly 80% in England, and even Germany has gone up really quite dramatically. So what's happening to our cities that there are no longer healthy places to live or play or grow up? Well, it doesn't have to be like this. This is Freiburg in southern Germany. And Freiburg, a university city, going back a 1,000 years, and it has recreated itself. It's removed the motor traffic from its city center, and it sets about building places that are fit for people to live healthy lives in. Compare this street in Freiburg with the street I showed you a minute ago. This street is designed to be lived in. It's, designed, it's not designed as a linear car park, but it's designed for people 
to live and play and uh, have fun. So how should we change our cities? Well, we have to change our built environment, but it is also you know, a bit about changing behavior. And one of the things that comes to our aid in changing behavior and making those healthy choices, the right choices for people to make, is fun theory. And fun theory holds that if you want to change people's behavior, they're much more likely to change the healthy option if the healthy option is fun. And we do need to change the choices are making. <laughs> and the reasons are pretty obvious all around us. Um, here's a really good example of uh, fun theory. Uh, this is an exit from a, a metro station in Sweden. And you can see the choices people are making between the stairs and, uh, and the escalator. Well, what happens if you paint the stairs like piano keys? In fact, you go more, than, do more than that. You turn them into piano keys so that as you walk up or down, you actually make the notes of a piano. Well, it changes behavior. What about this absolutely gorgeous flight of steps in Germany? Who wouldn't want to walk up that flight of steps? There are ways in which we can change our cities. One thing is very, very clear to me, that we can't have healthy people in sick cities. And our job is to set about changing our cities and turning them into places where we and our children can live safe, sustainable, and healthy lives. That's our job, and I'm very, very sure we can do it. Thank you very much.